Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we're talking cold water. Around the country, water temperatures are beginning to drop as we head towards winter. And when that happens, there are some key baits that we rely on to keep catching fish. This time of year is a really good time to be on the water. This transition from fall into winter as water temperatures are dropping is really unique. You're going to get less bites than you got in the spring or even in the summer, but there's an opportunity right now to catch really, really big fish and you can still catch them a lot of different ways. I think the one thing that people hang up on this time of year, what throws them off, is that as fish have moved towards their winter haunts, if you haven't been sticking with them, all of a sudden you can't find fish. Your fall fish, your shallow fish, are disappearing quickly if they're not already gone in the northern half of the country. In the southern half, that's not the case yet. Uh, and this is a funny time of year because different areas are so far into different parts of this transition. But generally speaking, those fish are making those moves to their winter haunts and if you didn't stay with them, finding them again can be a difficult deal. Most importantly, the biggest difference is that this time of year, when you go out searching for those fish, you're getting less bites. You're looking for big bites. And that's why we're out there fishing, even when it's cold, even when it's miserable, because you can catch the fish of a lifetime right now, not just small fish. And the, they're mixed in together. That's one of the coolest things. But the issue is that because you're getting less bites overall, it can be very difficult to fish with confidence. What I mean is if you go out in the spring, you go down the bank throwing a Senko, you don't get any bites, you switch to a shaky head, hey, you got a bite. Switch to a topwater, hey, one blew up on it. It's easy to build a pattern. This time of year, if you're out there floundering, not getting bit, you start playing those head games. Am I even doing the right thing? Am I throwing a bait they're willing to eat? Is this the wrong color? How long should I throw this before I switch to that? It can completely spin you out. So what I wanna to do today is just a very simple video. I want to give you my confidence baits going into this time of year. I keep it really simple. I really do. I say that a lot, but I really do. Now, I use two styles of baits. Well, three styles of baits, okay? I use big baits, big swim baits. Then I use baits that draw a reaction response or a feed response from a bass. And then I use slow moving finesse type baits. Let's start with those slow moving baits. Uh, and I'm really breaking this down just as far as I can because I want you to understand these concepts and I want you to fish with confidence. Uh, my slow moving baits, the colder it gets, I just keep narrowing down, narrowing down, narrowing down. Techniques just fall off the back of the wagon uh, until there's just a few things that I throw as we really get into cold, cold water. And those things that I end up at uh, when it comes to soft baits or slow moving baits is, is literally two. One is a jig. Now I have two styles of jig. This is a finesse football with a curly tail grub on it. So there's a five inch Yamamoto double tail in there. And then the other one is this little tiny micro jig, this Kitek micro jig. I've got a little Z-Man craws on there. All this is is just two different sizes, okay? If the fish are more aggressive, I'm getting more bites during the day, I'll go to the full size jig. I feel like I get more really big bites on that. But if I just feel like, hey, I don't even know if I'm going to get bit, I throw the micro jig. It's that simple. So one is a jig. And like every video, down in the video description, if you open the description, if you're on a phone, you gotta hit the more and then the three little dots. But you open that video description, we'll have all these products linked, my favorite colors, my exact size. I want you to fish with confidence. Um, the other one, when I narrow it all the way down to dead of winter, is a Ned Rig. It's that simple. Uh, my, if I could only have one, my go-to is just the straight up Z-Man Finesse TRD in Green Pumpkin. I mean, just the original. The thing just gets bit. There's no way around it. 
if I'm going to play a little bit, if it's one of those days where I get out there and I'm actually getting some bites and I want to try and upsize, I go to this one. It's the three inch Robo Worm Margarita Mutilator. It's this bright purple. I wish I could give you some scientific reason why I feel like I catch good ones on that bright purple. I don't have one. I'm just telling you, every winter, if I need to get but if I need to get bit, I start out throwing that green pumpkin. And if I'm like, all right, I've caught enough fish. They don't want anything else though. I'm gonna stick with this Ned rig. I go to that purple and it works. It's that simple. Uh, those are what I rely on when the water gets really cold. So if you're one of those guys, maybe you're in a Highland Reservoir, maybe you're farther north, uh, and your fish are already really starting to back off and get more difficult to catch. They're gathering on outside points. They're gathering on offshore humps, steep breaks, little rock transitions. Uh, those are the baits where I'm gonna sit there and just try and pick that stuff apart, fish them down bluff walls. Uh, there's a lot of ways and a lot of places to fish those baits, but just less is more. Barely move them, let them sit. Barely move them, let them sit. And that's it. The jig, the smaller jig, I fish that exact same way. The bigger jig, sometimes I'm pulling it, sometimes I'm doing that double hop. Just depends on the day. Again, I'm throwing the bigger, the bigger jig when I feel like they're a little more aggressive. So sometimes I'm using a, a little more action to that jig to try and get a little more of a reaction strike out of them. Now with that, that transitions us to reaction. This is the core of my bass fishing. Uh, there's a handful of baits that play in this category, but I want you to understand the concept. We've talked about this before. There's several ways to get a bass to bite. The first one is to fool them, i.e. put something in front of them that looks good. They come down, they inspect it, they decide I'm eating this and they eat it. That's way number one. Way number two, which is way more fun, is to draw a core response, a feed response. Bass are a predator. They are aggressive. You can play a cat and mouse game with them and they will react. Sometimes even when they don't want to. Even in frigid, cold water, I can get a fish to chase a speed crank. I'm talking water in the high 30s, low 40s and I can get them to charge after a bait on an eight to one reel. It goes completely against logic, completely, but it works. And it works on some of the biggest bass in your fishery. So when I'm playing that slow game, that's relying on a fish to want to bite. My whole other game, the vast majority of my fishing is dedicated to getting fish to react. There's a handful of baits that can do that. We just talked about metal baits the other day. We did a full video dedicated to that. If I could only have one style of metal bait as we head into winter and then into the heart of winter, it's going to be that blade bait. I talked about how these two baits, the Dyna Response and the Vault, are both tied on, they're completely different. This one vibrates much harder. This one is much more subtle. And on a given day, one or the other is the deal. I have both tied on. But this is a bait that you're fishing on bottom. Throw it out, let it hit. You pull it until you feel a little flutter, and then you stop, and it'll settle back down. Pull it, stop, it'll settle back down. That one shines the colder it gets. Bass are glued to the bottom. They're lethargic. They're sitting on the outside edges of rock. They're sitting right on that mud line and you could just hop that bait along and it'll flutter right across their face and they just react. It's just too easy for them. They just eat it. Uh, typically in the middle of winter, those bites are so subtle. You'll be hopping and all of a sudden you just think you're stuck to the bottom. Nope, that's a big one. Uh, so that's the blade bait. My personal favorite is speed cranking. Throwing a crankbait is not unfamiliar, but speed cranking is a whole different deal. We're talking taking a seven to one or an eight to one reel, turning that handle just as fast as you can go. Burn, 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 pause. Burn, 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 pause. Burn, 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 pause. And those fish come unglued. 
and more often than not, it's big ones. We started talking about this a few years ago. Two baits that are perfect for this category. This one, the Mega Bass Deep X 300, is just a fantastic, finesse type speed crank. The other one, the River to Sea Tactical DD 75, literally the bait Tim and I built for this technique. These two baits are deadly. This one is a little more subtle, runs a little more shallow. This one runs deeper, is super aggressive. Both have a fantastic sound to them. Both get bit extremely well in freezing cold water when you are burning. Again, in the video description, I'll give you my key confidence colors in each one of these baits, but this is a technique you can do. One of my favorite things about it, besides just playing catching giants in the freezing cold, is that it's not this like bundled up, you're freezing, you got ice on your mustache and you're trying to work a spinning rod. You're freezing. I love when it's cold and I'm out there just working. I'm sweating when everybody else is miserable to be out there because I'm cranking so hard. And then these big ones just start coming unglued for it. It's incredible. It is a very fun technique. If it's not something that you've tried, you are missing out. It works coast to coast. It works all winter long. Doesn't matter how cold your water gets. If your water is above frozen solid, they will eat a speed crank. And it goes completely against everything we know about bass, but it is a core response. It's not a desire to eat. It's a reaction. They chase, they eat. All right, I get amped up about that. Uh, just a couple more, the A-Rig. The A-Rig cannot be overlooked. It's that same thing. It's mimicking, mimicking a school of bait fish. This is the, again, a bait we designed. This is the tactical flex. Uh, Tim and I partnered up with Hog Farmer and built this. We built a six wire A-Rig because we feel like that is the best balance between number of fish in the school Six wires, six fish. That's a school, right? You're trying to imitate an entire school and get the fish to react. So it's the maximum number of baits in a school without getting a ton of weight and needing to go to super heavy gear. We don't do that. We throw it on generally pretty light tackle. A 20 pound leader on braid, on like a 7.5 medium heavy up to like a 7.7 seven heavy. I don't throw this stuff on a giant swim bait rod. You don't have to. I throw it on pretty light gear. And then again, that's a flex rig. That's why we built our own rig. We needed a rig with a ton of flex. That way when we're working, much like the speed crank, the speed crank is burning and then pause, burning, pause. When you pause, that fish is already chasing the burn. And then when it stops, they're just right there and they have to do something and they commit. The A-Rig, very similar. If you're just chucking and winding an A-Rig, you're missing the majority of your opportunities. The A-Rig, you wanna be real on that thing. And then I use two hard pumps. When you do that, those pumps, that rig is swimming along, coming towards me. And when I pump it, it tightens up and opens up, tightens up and opens up. It looks just like bait fish when they panic. If you've ever watched a little school of bait up in shallow water and you spook them with the boat or you walk by and they spook, they always tighten up, they get really close together, but then if they think they're in trouble and it's not gonna work, they just, they just spread out. And that's that moment when that bass will commit. So we're creating that moment of opportunity by imitating that movement throughout the retrieve. I'll do that a handful of times on every retrieve. That way, if there is a bass following, it thinks that that school of bait fish just busted it and they're gonna run and it needs to commit. Again, drawing a core response. Uh, two more baits that play in that game. The jerk bait. And again, if I could only have one, this time of year, water gets colder, Mega Bass Vision 110, plus one, that guy right there. The jerk bait is that same deal where we're using twitches followed by a long pause. The colder the water, the longer the pause, but it gives time if you work that jerk bait and it's sitting there hovering in the water and that bass starts to approach, they come up to inspect. And the reason you let it sit longer in colder water is that the bass are less likely 
to come quickly. The speed crank is different. It's unlike any other bait. It draws this different reaction. All these other baits, the fish move more slowly. So that jerk bait hovers, that bass starts to rise. And then when you twitch right there in front of them, they smoke it. And that's why so often, whether it's a three second pause or a 12 second pause, right after that first twitch, boom, there they are. That's when they react. Again, core feed response. I'm just driving that home. And then the last bait that I rely on, I don't know that it really even fits in the feed response. It's more of a finesse bait, but that's the, the underspin swim bait. That will be with me all winter long. It's just a core bait that I trust to get bit. I throw a bear swim bait too with no blade, but I'm telling you what, there's something about that blade in winter. And I'll be fishing this thing on the bottom so slow that I know the blade isn't turning. In fact, I've seen it in underwater footage. It's actually just glued to the belly of the bait, but it continues to work better than the bear swim bait most of the time. And I believe it's because it's ticking bottom. It's banging against rocks. It's making sound, which just helps fish key in on it from a little farther away. It just broadens the size of the strike zone where a fish is aware that that bait is there and is willing to eat it. And then last but not least is the big bait. Again, we're talking about catching giant fish. Uh, they've started moving to predictable places, right? Outside rock, edges of bluff walls, transitions to deep water, uh, likely places where you can take a big bait and go directly approach those fish and know they're there. This is the time of year where that wedge tail is coming back into play big time. Most of the swim baits I'm throwing in the winter are wedge tails rather than boot tails. And we're just creeping, just as slow as you can stand to go. And then out of nowhere, dunk, they just inhale that thing. This is more like a jig or a Ned rig in that you're relying on the fish to come up and see it, want to eat it and commit. Now, if you are fishing in a place where the water is shallower, you can still throw a glide bait in the winter. The glide bait is more like a jerk bait in that you're working it nice and slow and steady and then those twitches draw a reaction strike. The glide bait is a deadly winter bait. The issue with the glide is that they fish higher in the water column. So if you're on a highland reservoir, most of the time, not a player in the winter. Uh, but the guy who's like, I'm on a shallow body of water. It's three feet deep, it's six feet deep, it's 12 feet deep at the deepest. You can catch glide bait fish all winter long because again, the glide bait plays on that key core response. You're working it slow, you add those two twitches, it cuts, it darts like it's going to run and they commit to it. So if your fish are up shallow, if you're catching generally shallow fish, absolutely add the glide bait to your mix. If they're not, if your bites are coming in 10, 15, 20, 25 deeper, then rely on a big soft bait to get on bottom, hold bottom and just go super slow and just wait, literally wait for one of those giants to tag that thing. But hands down, the most fun way to catch them is to get that feed response. And you can do this as we head into winter. So many guys think winter, they're like bundled up, spinning rods. That's not what I think. I think A-rig time, speed cranking time, jerk baiting time. It's a fun time of year. Again, I'll link the baits in the video description, but the goal of today's video was for you guys to have confidence because this time of year, you will get less bites. It's harder to get feedback from those fish to know for sure that you're doing the right thing. So I want you to know exactly what we are fishing with, the exact colors, the sizes, everything. Uh, that way you can go out there with confidence and know that you're at least doing the right things and you stick with it long enough for one of those big ones to bite. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.